Hey guys, today on In The Shop, we're going to be talking about the FLIR Thermal Imager and why I think every shop should have one of these in their bag of tricks. So every once in a while you come across a tool that you really wonder, how did I do without this thing? And let me tell you, this FLIR Thermal Imager is by far one of the coolest tools in my toolbox. Um, the uses for this thing are absolutely endless. Uh, I mean, anything you would normally use an infrared thermometer for, this thing knocks it out of the park because you can really get like a nice good picture of exactly what's going on. But I'm about to show you a few things that might be a little bit outside the box you might not think of and they're gonna be a huge time saver. Hopefully this helps some of you guys. So a great use for this is checking brakes. So if you have a car that pulls and you wanna to try to determine if it's you know a locked up caliper or some other suspension component or alignment issue, what you can do is use a thermal imager to check the temperature of the brakes. And then you compare one side to the other and if one side get it to focus is warmer than the other you'll be able to tell if uh, if that caliper is locked up so another pretty cool thing you can use these for is for example on something like this Mustang or uh, you know, some diesel engines or whatever you come across, older older engines, tractors and everything where you're having trouble diagnosing which cylinder is misfiring. Um, you can simply take the, take the thermal imager and while you're running it, aim it at each individual exhaust manifold or header pipe and you'll see that the cylinder that's misfiring is going to be colder. So it's pretty easy to narrow that down. Um, like I said, some of these cars like this, you can't really plug into it and and scan it and do like a cylinder contribution test or anything like that. So to me, the easiest way aside from pulling one plug at a time is to just check the heat source coming out of each exhaust port and uh, gives you a pretty good indicator of the health of the cylinder. You can also use this to check your exhaust. For instance, a catalytic converter should be hotter on the outlet than it is on the inlet. And this is due to the catalytic reaction inside the converter itself. Now, if it's hotter on the inlet side than it is on the outlet, you most likely have a restricted catalytic converter. So another thing you can use this for is checking for a restricted heater core. The inlet and the outlet should have a slight difference in temperature, but if there's a dramatic difference, like one is hot, and the other one's cold, your heater core is probably restricted. So I think my favorite use for this tool is to find like high resistance in a circuit. Um, a lot of times you come across this when you get a wire that there's a hole poked in it from someone else testing or the vehicle's been in a crash or someone screwed through it or whatever it may be. But if you work on cars, you know what I'm talking about. You'll get like a, a dim bulb or you'll get issues with directionals or there's so many wires in a car, it could be an issue with any of these, any of these circuits. But basically what I got here is I have a harness that I made up and you're going to see in a second that one bulb is going to be dim. The other bulb is going to be bright. And I put another bulb inside the harness hidden to take up some of the resistance on one of these circuits, the bulb that's dim. And I'm going to show you exactly what happens when you have high resistance and what it looks like on a thermal imager. And it can help you narrow down one of those corrosion spots and can save you a lot of time instead of having to tear a whole wire and harness apart or tear half the car apart to try to find exactly what you got going on. All right, so what we got here is two bulbs, two separate circuits. I just put them all together in one wiring harness, basically to simulate like a left tail light or a right tail light. So one of them is nice and bright and as you can see, the other one is dim. So this would be caused by something like corrosion and one of the circuits somewhere and 
if you're trying to find this in an engine har- or wiring harness in a car, it can really kind of sometimes be a disaster unless it just jumps right out at you. So what you can do is use a thermal imager. If you see, you have the two bulbs there. It's a little reflection coming off the stainless steel bench, but you could follow the harness along. And then you get to a certain point in the harness where you'll see a glow again. And that's because the resistance makes heat. So if you get that green corrosion, in order for the, the electricity to overcome that resistance, it's going to make heat. Just like a light bulb gets hot, same thing when you have a little bit of corrosion. Um, now, it might not be necessarily so dramatic, but if you have high resistance in a wiring harness and you follow it along with a thermal imager, you'll definitely find that. Well, I really hope you guys found this helpful. Um, I know that this tool has saved me some time quite a few, on quite a few occasions. Um, I'm going to put a couple links in the description below. It's, uh, they got this handheld style and they have a few that will like pop into like a cell phone or a tablet or anything similar to that. And I think those are a little bit cheaper, but either way, I'm going to put the options in the description below. And I really hope you guys like this. If you did, hit that like button, maybe consider giving me a subscribe so you can check out my stuff in the future. If you really liked it, hit that bell. That way you get notifications every time I post a video. If you don't hit that bell, you might not get a notification. You might miss some of my uploads. But as always, guys, thanks for watching In The Shop.